Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, this morning. Uh, I want just to read a verse uh, from John's Gospel. It's John chapter 14 and verse number 6. And uh, in this uh, verse, the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking and he says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And we do look to God to bless his word. Now, I've spoken on that verse uh, a few weeks ago, and I was uh, just discussing it with a friend of mine called Sheena, and she was recalling to me uh, how much that verse meant to her. She had learned it as a wee girl in Sunday school many years ago, and it got me thinking again about this verse. Uh, there is so much in it, and I've been looking at it again and revisiting it, and I wanted just to share some fresh thoughts on it, as uh, Sheena has reminded me of this very interesting verse in John chapter 14. It does encapsulate so much of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, of what he does, and of why he came. And if we can get to grips with that verse and really understand that verse, I think that we've got a really good handle on what the message of the Bible is, certainly the message of John's Gospel. And we have got a, a really good handle on what the good news message of this great book is, the Gospel message. So let's just think a little bit about some of these uh, points that the Lord Jesus Christ makes. Now, the very first of them, of course, he says this, I am the way. I am the way. And it's very clear in John chapter 14 that he's speaking about the way to heaven and the way to God. Uh, at the beginning of John 14, he uh, encourages his disciples in anticipation of the fact that he himself is going to be uh, put to death on the cross, that he himself is going to return to heaven. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house and many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And doubting Thomas, of course, he has a question, he, or really a statement. He says, Lord, we, we do not know where you go and how can we know the way and so thomas is speaking about the way to heaven the way to god lord jesus christ says he is the way now over the years i've listened to a number of uh, friends uh, speaking about the way to god and perhaps i could summarize them in three uh, groups uh, uh, so far as the general response that i found to this what is the way to god what is the way to heaven there are those who completely reject the Bible and completely uh, reject uh, any belief, in fact, in, in God. And they would tell us, of course, that there is no way uh, because there is no heaven and no God. There is another group that uh, perhaps would have uh, a little idea of what the Bible has to say. And uh, they would tell you, perhaps, that there is a way to God, but it's a way of doing things, a way of keeping rules and regulations, a way of living a good life, and that that perhaps one day will mean that we'll get into heaven. And that kind of group of people tend to know a little bit about the Bible. They maybe know a little bit, for example, about the Ten Commandments. And they assume that by keeping some of those commandments, that that somehow will allow them to get to heaven. Now, that's not what this verse says at all. And then there's another group of people who maybe know a little bit about the Bible, but not very much at all. Um, uh, they have a vague idea that there is a God somewhere. And uh, perhaps, sadly, it's, it's amongst the biggest group out there. And they, they will tell you that, yes, there is a God, but there's not really much of a way to him. Everybody eventually gets there in the end. Now, that idea is certainly not consistent either with what the Lord Jesus Christ says. The Lord Jesus Christ tells us that, first of all, uh, there is a place to go to. There is a heaven and there is a God. And he tells us that there is also a very specific way. How do we know that there's a God? And how do we know that there's a heaven? Well, I believe that there is both. I believe there is both a heaven and there is God. 
And I believe that for at least three reasons. First of all, because of life. And so far as I can stretch my mind, I can never ever get my mind round the idea uh, that life happened uh, by accident. I don't believe that it happened by accident. It is not possible that it happened by accident. Even some of the greatest atheist thinkers can't really come up with an explanation as to how life just happened. It didn't just happen. The simplest form of life that science has discovered is the life of a mycoplasma, a bacteria. In fact, a, a bacteria that's even simpler than a bacteria, um, almost like a virus. And in that little viral particle, that mycoplasma, it has uh, a code, a code for life, uh, a nucleic acid code for life that runs to um, 300,000 letters. Um, and those letters have to be in the right order for the very simplest form of life to exist. The amount of information in you and I, well, if you were able to extract it from your body, it would stretch from the earth to the sun and back a thousand times. And all of that information has to be uh, correctly packaged, correctly ordered. It's like a book, if you like, uh, and that book tells us uh, how we make cells, how we make brain cells, uh, how we make taste buds, uh, how we make the uh, light receptors in our eyes, uh, how we make muscles, uh, how we um, control the heart. It has, it has the complete instruction manual as to how to make a person. And that manual, like any manual, if you go and buy a car manual, uh, the, the words in it make sense and the letters are in a particular order and they have to be. And if you just jumbled the order up, then it wouldn't make any sense. And the same is true of the code that makes life. If you get one letter, for example, out of order, the whole thing crumbles. So, for example, one letter out of order in the human genome, in the information that makes a person a person, could give you cystic fibrosis, which up until recently uh, was fatal, uh, even in infancy and childhood. So life is not accidental. It's ordered. It is designed. It has meaning. Uh, it is, has been very carefully put together. It must have an origin. I believe there's a God because of life. Secondly, I believe there is a God because of history. Uh, and in the book of Isaiah, God says this, or Isaiah says this about God. He says, I am God uh, because I declare the end from the beginning. In other words, God proves that he's God by telling us what he will do hundreds or thousands of years down the line and then doing it. Now, the only person that could arrange events thousands of years in advance is God. Uh, my lifespan and your lifespan is maybe three score year and ten, seventy years, some eighty years. Uh, I think the oldest man just died there about one hundred and fourteen. I noticed, but that would be about the extent of human life. But in the Bible, you have God speaking about events. A thousand and two thousand years in advance. And then he brings them to pass very precisely. We have that particularly, but not uniquely, we have that particularly in the life of Jesus Christ. And so you can go back into the book of Micah, 500 years before the Lord Jesus Christ came and you find a place that he would be born. You could go back into the Psalms, uh, seven, eight hundred years before the birth of the Lord Jesus, and you would find a description, a very precise description of his crucifixion and his resurrection. You could go back into the book of Isaiah. And again, five, six hundred years before the birth of the Lord Jesus, and you would find that he would be born of a virgin. You'd be, you, would, you would find there uh, his miracles. Uh, you would find the reason for his death, that he would be wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And many other details about the life and death of the Lord Jesus there are concealed within the Old Testament of the Bible. And then uh, time elapses, a thousand years on some occasions, two thousand years. And he comes when the Bible says he would come to the place that the Bible said he would come, that he dies in the place that Daniel said he would die at Jerusalem, that he would be crucified as uh, David and Isaiah uh, um, prophesy. And so I believe there's a God, first of all, because of life. It just didn't happen. There's, there's more to it than that. It's, it's intelligent and it's, it's designed. Secondly, I believe there's a God because of history, the way that God is in control of history, declaring what he will do, and then bring it to pass. And thirdly, I believe there's a God because of Jesus Christ. That is, that here is an intervention of God himself coming into time 
and doing the very things that we would expect God to do. That's what, what John's writing about in this gospel, as we've mentioned in the past, that he he he's able to control the, the wind and the sea. He's able to satisfy human uh, need. He is able to tell an individual all about their life ever uh, before he met them. Uh, he is able to uh, meet men in their greatest need. Uh, he's able to perform the works of, of creatorial power, giving a sight to the blind. Uh, he has the authority to forgive sins. And he does that. And he dies at the cross as men reject him. And then he's raised again from the dead. And that's eyewitness that's testified. And the men that see that and the men that testify to that are prepared to and do die for that. They're absolutely convinced that the Jesus Christ who performed these miracles, who was crucified historically under Pontius Pilate, was also raised again from the dead. And that is powerful. That's a powerful piece of testimony. And I believe that today we can encounter Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the way. There is a way to the God in heaven. I believe there's a God in heaven. I believe there's a God. I believe there's a heaven. And Jesus Christ is the way. Now, ironically, you see, there are many who reject the very notion of God. And the reason for that is, well, they haven't found him. They don't know him. The fact that men disbelieve God is testimony to the fact that there's a distance between us and God. That distance has to be overcome. It has to be bridged. There's a great gulf, a great gap. It's a moral gap. And that moral gap, that spiritual gap, is a gap that the Lord Jesus Christ himself is able to bridge. Isaiah 53 speaks about the work of the Lord Jesus Christ as being a unique work, that he is wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, Peter looks at the work of the Lord Jesus in providing this way. And here's what Peter says. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. You see, the great barrier between us and God, the reason we don't know him is because of our sins. And he brings us to God because he pays the price for our sins, because he has suffered. He's the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. We need a way back to God. We don't know God because there is that gap. Jesus Christ is that way. And in John 14, verse 6, three great profound truths that he makes. First of them, we've just looked at this this morning. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Trust that you know him. He is the only way back to God.